Hello, beloved Twin Flames. This is Steph Parasha, Divine Light, coming out to you from New Zealand, Aotearoa, and it's the 26th of May, 2019. I'm going to bring you uh, some information on my understanding of what some of the themes are that we're working on collectively, uh, that we're working through emotionally and, and healing within ourselves as a group and as a community. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about my own twin flame journey and what's going on between myself and my twin at the moment. And I'm also going to continue um, reading my own twin flame story that I've written, but I'm at the moment in the midst of reading it out. So if you've come across this video and it's the first time you've, you've seen me, um, if you want to sort of get a background some of the previous, the last four videos I think I've been reading through my story. However, if you've come across it today, it probably just means that you are receiving the information that you need to hear today, which is perfect. So um, just a little bit about the generalized energies of what's going on at the moment around in the field. Um, we're definitely doing a lot of balancing out of polarities, and this is a big a uh, big, big job that Twin Flames are involved with. In fact, all people are involved with uh, really balancing out where we've gone into extremes of one behavior or another or a type of attitude or another or a way of being or a belief that perhaps sits on one or either of the ends of a spectrum and when we sit on one end or the other end and we're, we're polarized we can't we're not in balance so so I'll give you an example for what I'm talking about um, in particularly, and it's a theme that I'm seeing sort of coming up quite a lot for a lot of light workers that we tend to struggle with sometimes, and that is we are, there's a group in our society that are have a hold a sense of entitlement that feel that they deserve to kind of control the situation or they have um, all the power in a situation and they'll wield their power sort of unashamedly and sometimes in a way that will be quite often damaging to others or inconsiderate of others. And then on the other end of that polarity, you've got humbleness. And I do know that, again, it's kind of following on from a theme that I spoke about last week when I talked about the video that Matt Khan had put out where he talks about light workers generally kind of going towards the end of the spectrum where we become so humble and we become so caring about others needs that we have forgotten ourselves and we will become almost kind of like doormats and put the other person before us so in order to come into balance these people need a little bit more humbleness over here the ones that have become really entitled and almost to the point of being disrespectful of others and stepping on others and us over here I'm going to put myself in this category that uh reason you know quite humble and prepared to let another person go in front of you for example at a queue if they look like they need it um you know being the good guy being the nice person but to the point of almost you know disrespecting yourself so this crew over here could really do with quite a bit of um a little bit more entitlement this crew, and, and so you're coming into the middle now and you're going to have less people that are acting out of entitlement and less people that are kind of just thinking they don't deserve it or prepared to let others go in front and and this group taking on a little bit more um, deservedness and entitlement and um, taking their power back so for me personally this week it's been a lot about taking my power back in a, in a really big way and wherever I've used those uh, the, the way of being in which I've allowed others to you know take the lead or sometimes take the power where it's actually not appropriate. I've sort of set, stepped back for fear of creating an even bigger conflict or um, not wanting to get into a situation where I have to be the tough guy and, and sort of almost uncomfortable doing that. Um, I've really had to learn over the last few, probably few months. Oops, excuse me. I'm just moving the, myself around a bit there. Um, so, you know, what comes in the middle of, the balance is, is a healthy person, is a healthy person who's not either extreme, go, behaving in, in either extreme. Um, what else have I written down here? So, yeah, in amongst that, you know, I, I've been really hearing the words and the messages a lot lately, a lot. Step up, you know, now's the time. Um, it, it's the time to continue to step up in your role as a light worker. You cannot hide in the shadows anymore. There's no room for that. There's all 
it's all about coming into our power now and claiming what's ours and fighting the good fight and standing up for those really good values of love and compassion and patience and justice and all the while continuing to use our strength to stand calm to stand firm in the um in amongst chaos and destruction and in amongst a time um, a time when there's still a lot of manipulation going on and some people are still trying to behave in ways which is unhealthy and it's our time to say no to that to all of that so wherever you find yourself in those kind of situations um, at the same time we're setting boundaries to inappropriate behavior we're also really understanding the people that are going through that um, situation to try and really understand what why they're behaving the way they are and that generally it's usually because they're, they're experiencing a pain, a hurt, a lack of love. And if we as light workers can also have that compassion um, in the way that we deal with those people, that will also could also create a radical transformation for them as well. But, you know, it's a very, again, a very fine balance to maintain because, at the same time you're telling a person hey that that's not okay what you're doing but at the same time you're saying to them what will it take you know to for you to um to just relax and and, and receive the love and to trust to know that you are safe and that all is going to be well you know to talk to them in a, in a soft way so that they you know their def their defenses will go down and um they won't feel quite as threatened by whatever situation it is because people that have had a lot of pain or threat in their lives and um, see everything as threatening. So they're, they're seeing it through a lens that's a little bit distorted and looks like, um, and, and you could even be the person that triggers them um, to look at their wounds. The you, just by you being you, are uh, um, perhaps representing something to them that, that they're struggling with or that they still have a wound around. So therefore you could be the person that helps transform them by showing them the love and compassion that they're really, really needing the most. So um, we are still in a, in a very, as, as always, kind of thing, but um, a, a big time of change, a big time of transformation in terms of our bodies, physical, um, mental, emotional, everything's getting continually upgraded. So during these times, it's super important, as always, to make sure we have enough rest, uh, enough sleep, and and just taking ourselves out whenever we need to, to just have quiet time, or just time in nature is another one. If you're not spending enough time in nature, that can really, really, really help. It's a huge healer, just natural healing that, that nature provides, being near a river or a forest or water. Also making sure we're um, exercising enough and moving our bodies and, you know, the more the better, I suppose, without going too crazy on it, but um, making sure we're eating right as much as we can, you know, and I say all these things and I still need to work uh, better at and, and do better at some of these things, you know, drinking enough water as well, um, really, really important. So um, I'm also getting for some people just to mention Personally, I don't feel like this is for me, but perhaps some people, some of you out there are kind of due to do some traveling or uh, have a change of circumstances, a change to your surroundings. And that is partially to do with the energy of wanting you to kind of shift something, shift out of a funk or some stuckness that, that you may feel like you've been in. That's going to help shift that and to start your new cycle, to start your new uh, change that you're needing to to create. I'm constantly amazed at how fast and how quickly we're changing and how much I've seen a change in myself just from where I was, the people I was around. You know, sometimes it's not it's not always even clear cut to say, oh, you know, I'm so glad I've moved on from that or I'm not like that anymore. I can't even see it that way anymore. It's just like the part, those parts of me are continually going and they're, they're almost lost and I feel like I would never be that person again therefore everything's changing so quickly people are also coming in as well um, another big message which actually came from my beloved twin so now I'm going to just have a little talk about 
the connection that I had with, with my twin flame this week. Um, those of you that listen to me regularly will know that my twin flame and I are really good friends and we have regular contact um, via Messenger and, and WhatsApp and things like that. We talk on the phone. Um, we just we keep in touch regularly and we have whenever we can we have really good long conversations and often the conversations are very much about the themes of you know relationships and emotional healing issues that we're working on within ourselves and healing and a lot of support that we provide for each other so I think I mentioned just recently I've sort of gone through a bit of a time when I didn't talk to my twin for quite a while and it was quite weird I was the one that was kind of not feeling to talk to him and um, taking at least, I think it ended up being about three weeks where I didn't communicate with him. And when I finally did, he he was really grateful to receive that. And he, he even said, you know, I, it's been a long time since I've heard you and it's really good to hear your voice. And I felt almost kind of, kind of bad in a way that I'd, it had been so long, but it was just some stuff that I was working through that was, you know, taking its toll. And anyway, so uh, we still hadn't managed to actually have a proper conversation face to face or one to one and so this during the I think it was last week um, it wasn't so long it was a few days ago basically because um, today I'm talking on Sunday and it was during this week that I had a dream I think it was like maybe Monday night or something and start of the week and I thought oh I really need to talk to him but that night I had a dream about him and I don't always have dreams about him and as you know we can't really control our dreams but along they come and I had a dream where we were intimate and we were really really close and actually kissing and I was like wow this and the I am going to do another video on this um, some other time because it is quite a topic that I do want to cover but I'm not going to go into it too much here but I find that when I we have um, it's what I call dream intimacy with my twin it's the strongest energy and I really believe that twin flames have stronger what I call energetic um, energetic intimacy and love and connection on such a different energetic level that it's so powerful I would have to, I'd put it way above like streets ahead like beyond anything that you'd experience in the physical realm so like even when I think about physical contact with him in the 3D it just doesn't even compare to the kind of stuff that we have on this dream level so anyway he came in really strong and I was really feeling him that day I went to work and I thought I've got to speak to him tonight so I got home and then he was just there and there and there he was just energetically there just so strong so I got onto my whatsapp and I went to record or send him a message and say I was actually going to say should we talk and I saw um audio recording audio so my twin his name and went on to his thing to write him a message and it had recording audio I thought oh that's interesting he's he's already recording an audio he must I wonder if he's sending it to me and then I thought oh you know I don't need to be so presumptuous he could have been sending it to anyone I don't really know how WhatsApp works whether it shows that they're online or recording an audio it might not just be directed to you but in the meantime I thought oh and I kept looking and looking he was still recording I thought oh it's going on a wee while I thought okay I'll, I'll record him a message too um on in the meantime and I'll just say hey I'm was got, I got on to send you a message but saw that you were already recording an audio it might be to me or it might be to someone else but if it is to me it'd be quite cool because it's obviously a synchronicity and then he sent his and then I sent mine that straight away so he knew that you know it was it was it would have and then I realized you know when when I did receive it through that it was to me <laughs> so that was a confirmation and and then we ended up talking on the phone so that was awesome and I think I felt like that week I really 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 needed it to be quite honest I've been as you know those that listen to me regularly struggling with some work um, workplace relationship dynamics and um, again this this lesson the big strong lesson about stepping up and standing up it, it couldn't be more um, stronger for me right now and so he just said uh, he'd given me some really beautiful advice and I'm so grateful to him for that like he 
Um, this is what I like about our relationship because although I'm older than him and generally, you know, people that are older are meant to be wiser, not necessarily, I'll have to say, <laughs> um, you know, um, I probably made more mistakes. Um, but he being much younger than me, I fully, fully respect him and his wisdom. And he just comes from such a unique, beautiful perspective. And he said to me, you need to ask for help. You need to ask for help. And it was just something so simple. And, you know, I've been raised in that generation that, you know, you kind of don't ask for help. Um, and when you do, it's a sign of weakness or something like that. And it's just actually quite ridiculous. We, we should know better by now. Um, but it's something that I, that I had to shift. And so I feel like that was a, such a beautiful piece of information and advice. And I would love to share that out even further because I think a lot of us are in a quite a difficult state at the moment we're struggling with whatever whatever we're struggling with and we just need to ask for help and when we ask for it and I remember I heard it again it also came up in Matt Khan's video he also said um, he said it in a way of may I be supported may I be supported and I'd been saying that all week may I be supported may I be supported please may I be supported and um, yeah so and it came through, and it came through in a couple of different ways last week. It was pretty amazing. And so all we need to do is ask, you know, and I, and I sort of knew that, but I'd kind of forgotten, as you do. And so, um, yeah, just another reminder, just ask. And, and again, I think it was um, Amanda Ellis this week as well. She's another amazing spiritual light worker um beautiful woman who does amazing videos if you don't already listen to her please go and check her stuff it's so grounded and and just beautiful so she also talked about some of these messages as well she went to um talking about uh the armor of god and it's something that i've been that's been with me for probably since last year when i encountered some very toxic a toxic individual and that touched my life and became quite manipulative in my world and I really had to learn that hey not everybody out there is actually nice and how to deal with some of these darker toxic energies and um, she mentioned the armor of God in her video and so that is really you can look into that yourself but for me I interpret it as being in your truth being in, in your integrity being in your light um, being in your faith um, also being prepared to ask for help and know that you're going to be helped as well and standing up for justice and truth and being strong and they talked about wearing the shoes um, and I've been getting really difficult feet my feet have been in a lot of pain and I've been working through different reasons why that might be but it was to do with wearing the shoes of peace and remaining calm when things are difficult and yeah, that whole thing about standing up for the light um, and how obvious it is now and how we can see really clearly who's operating in which energy and you can just see it, you can see it and you can feel it and um, it, you, you just can't hide anymore. The dark really can't hide it. It's, it's being exposed. So, and those of us that are working in the light need to still continue to be vigilantly protecting ourselves and protecting our... I'll have to say, because I believe some of us have also been given um, what I'd call people that you're meant to look after. Um, I, I'm getting the word subjects, which is a weird kind of word because it sounds like you're kind of like a king and you have your subjects. But um, that is not, I don't want to come from a sort of elevated hier hierarchical place when I'm saying that. But I think it's people that you you are there to, to help and support as well. So... Um, yeah, so I think I will, um, yeah, oh, there's just a little bit more that I talked, uh, my twin flame and I talked about, which was quite interesting. Um, he is actually seeing someone at the moment and, you know, I'm way past the point of jealousy with him. Like we're not together in a, in a romantic relationship, nor will I, do I ever think we will be. And that's because I don't believe that twin flames are here to re replicate the whole romantic partnership template paradigm thing all over again and so I know that if we do have any kind of relationship it, it just is what it is in the moment and I'm happy with the relationship we actually have 
right now. Um, that's that's fine for me. And he's learning uh, at the moment, and it's something that I knew that he was going to be learning when he met this particular woman because it felt really uh, it's that real magnetism where they there's a lot of love, there's a lot of what I would probably call more like lust, a lot of attraction. And um, and I thought this is the woman that's going to throw him into rejection. She's he's going to love her to the point where he he has to, which we all have to do. We all have to go to the point where we love someone so much that they touch us so deeply that we will feel it so more, much more painfully when they do um, kind of pull the trigger in a way. And he seems to have kind of got the same insight as well, which is quite amazing. He has the very high level of awareness. Um, and I think, gosh, those these are things that took me years and years of blindness where I've just went, dove on in and my gullible sort of, oh, I'm going to fall in love again sort of way. But he's going into it with this amazing amount of awareness, but he knows he kind of has to. And he said he almost wants her to be with someone else sooner rather than later so he can kind of almost get it over and done with as if mm, it's kind of strange but yeah so we talked about that fear of rejection or just the energy of rejection in general that has such a huge impact on us and how we will recover from such a thing so we we spend a lot of time talking about the fear of rejection and being alone we we spent we spent a lot of time talking about those concepts so uh, now I said we've already got to 20 minutes, which happens so quickly. And as part of these videos, every week I have been reading out my Twin Flame story. And I have got up to the point where I'm discussing, it's the early days, I've only just met my twin. And um, he's actually my neighbor. Um, when That's how we met. He moved into the house next door to where I live. And quite a close sort of um, flat like they were actually touching the houses were touching so that kind of neighbor not sort of across the fence you know um, so we're just we're still getting to know each other and then these synchronicities and signs and weird things start happening so I'm just going to read you it's probably going to be about 10 pages of the story that's from um, I've already read prior to now and now we're going into the next stage of where we're up to Oops. Right, okay, so the next uh, synchronicity and signs was all about the eternity symbols and the yin and the yang. So it was the Gemini full moon, November 2015. We'd made a bonfire beside the lake and it was the first time we would be using it ceremoniously. We had invited friends to come and share with us, but only a few showed up and they all left early, leaving just us alone. We had brought along a collection of musical instruments and began to play and sing together. At this stage, he had been living next door for one month, and I was kind of floating in a bubble of loved-up bliss and harmony, still hardly believing he was real. This was the night I had to keep pinching myself. We talked about how much we both love fire, music, being outside in the moonlight, being free. We also talked about the yin and yang, male-female balance and imbalance. Have I mentioned that almost everything he says... I feel like it comes from within me. There is nothing this guy says that I do not that I do not resonate deeply with. He was still learning how to play the accordion and began playing a simple tune, but it was so beautiful. My ancient gypsy spirit was aroused. My heart felt like it was expanding and jumping out of my chest. My heart was so open wide and I was so happy. I was kind of getting ecstatic and jumpy. I could feel something very spiritual and energetic happening within me and around me. My inner guidance told me very loudly, get out of your head. Just be in the moment, trust and go with the flow. The music, the rhythm, the vibration, the tone, his energy, my energy, dancing, swirling, heart activation, love without limit. Then he spoke and asked me to come and help him play the accordion as he was having trouble with the left-right brain connection. He played one side and I played the other. This involved sitting very close. I do not know how to play and I felt kind of shy and overwhelmed being that close to him and self-conscious about my lack of sharpness. I felt just slightly off with my playing. I was worried it would be awkward and come out sounding awful. But then something happened. It was as if the angels were guiding my hand to play the notes, an unseen lyrical force creating the most amazing harmonization and sound that you could never repeat. It was a total one-off. 
I was almost speechless, but I remember feeling our energy merging and the universe's energy moving and feeling the eternity symbol weave a golden figure of eight between us and our hearts. And the music just kept playing by itself. And I think I managed to say, who's playing this music? I had merged into the unified field, the oneness, the out of body, out of mind, together with him, feeling kind of as if this would be romantic if I wasn't having such a really amazing spiritual experience. I'm just going to pause for one second before I read the next bit. Okay, sorry, right, so we're going to go on to the next synchronicity, L love notes. Later, I found out it had been a Gemini full moon, and the whole theme was about harmonization and union of the two, and of course, twins. I wrote him a wee note the next day with a simple mandala drawing. Okay, sorry about that. I just got my camera just turned itself off for some strange reason. So I'm just going to finish off with my story. So I had mentioned that I left him a wee note with a yin and yang symbol saying how much I love the music and sharing and thanked him for being him. Then we kind of started leaving notes and things at each other's door or food offerings either of us had made or just notes, even if it was just high or something practical about the power bill or internet. Cute stuff. We would see each other when we could, but I realised it was also important to keep boundaries, and I have a habit of getting intertwined with people, so I was really careful about keeping my distance too, and just getting on with my work and other stuff in my life, and not getting all caught up in a schoolgirl type crush. I had been down this track before, of having big crushes on guys that were either unrequited, or turned out to be a big unsatisfying disappointment. Anyway, it was time to return to his home country to be with family for Christmas holidays, and I was also heading away on my holidays, which would mean a break of about three to four weeks. But before that, one day I came home to find a plastic container beside the washing line. He came outside and asked me to look inside, laughing his gorgeous smile, eyes sparkling, but almost giggling in a shy, self-conscious way. Inside the container was a giant egg. We had geese at our place, a couple I had named Goosey and Lucy. It was one of their eggs, and it had been rejected. He found it right there by the washing line and put it straight in the container. The next day, I found another egg placed strategically beside my veggie garden. Two eggs. Cosmic eggs. <laughs> and I will just add to that, because after he left um, that place, he stayed for about six months, and then I stayed on for two years. And there were never any more eggs after that. It was only during that time that he was there that those geese um, had those eggs. So that I thought, you know, looking back, how how cosmic that really was. So um, there is another little one here, but I'm actually just going to skip over that because it's interesting, but there's something after that that's even more interesting. It was something to do with um, a flower that's particular to me, but it's also particular to him as well. So um, while he was away, um, he, he finally went away on his Christmas holidays and while he was away this gave me time to start getting my head around so much of what had been happening. I began to put some things together. I felt as if I were having some kind of spiritual connection but I could not put my finger on exactly what this met, meant. I was confused about how to act, act on this in the material world. I began researching the internet and this is when I came across the twin flame stuff. From what I was reading it was kind of sounding like this was what I may be experiencing. Me, a twin flame, isn't it a little too soon to start making claims? You've only just met this guy, and now you think you've come from one soul. If he was your twin flame, you would definitely know it, and you would not be questioning it. Confusion, doubt, illusion, ego. But something could not stop me from reading and listening to more and more YouTube videos on twin flames. The tarot readings and everything were very clearly resonating, and all so on track. Okay, I had to get a handle on this. I definitely needed those three weeks away from him to process all the stuff that came up for me around the realization that I think he was showing up as my twin flame. Now I'm just going to talk, start a little bit more on this phase and then I'm going to finish there for today. So this is when my fears started coming up and this is like a phase that happened after our sort of, I guess you'd say the bubble time, I actually realized I was having a total panic attack and freak out about this whole thing and traced it to a fear of intimacy. 
which related to an even deeper fear of rejection, rela related to an even deeper feeling of unworthiness. In some ways, I just did not even want this to happen at all, or believe that it, it could. I certainly did not really believe that this was for me. I was still a little unclear about whether this whole twin flame phenomena had been invented just to distract us all away from our mission, rather than to activate and empower it further. Some cynical and sceptical unloved part of me was being super resistant to the Hollywood coupley, smoochy, heterosexual, boy or girl romance bullshit. I would rather be on my own as a strong xenotype warrior woman than a mushy brained gooey girly will in love. Poo to that. No, thank you. Oh God, please no. Do I really have to get stuck with a guy? Is that it now? So God wants me to fall in love and light up the world and save everyone with this blinding fire handsome young man mature goddess oh it's all muddled i think i'm mixing up my movies who's in charge of this whole thing time to go away on holiday camping and festival with my bestie on the road just the girls no children so i threw myself wholeheartedly and desperately into forgetting all about the twin flame neighbor and just got on with being me at the festival i had a couple of nudges from spirit that I, number one, needed to sort out my fear of intimacy issues, and number two, that men could be quite nice if you let them be. In fact, some of them were really, really nice. I was seeing a lot of really beautiful men. On one of the days at the festival, I attended a male-female sharing circle that my soul was strongly urging me to do. Strangely, the facilitators didn't show up. It was held in a teepee, and there were quite a few of us sitting and waiting. We decided we still wanted to go ahead with the sharing circle, and there was a call put out to anyone that might be able to facilitate. My best friend suddenly pipes up and says, Steph will do it. She's great at this. She's an experienced facilitator and has already held a workshop like this. Oh my God, I couldn't get out of it after that. Spirit had given me the nudge, my beautiful friend pushing me off the cliff. It was New Year's Eve 2016. I knew I had already arrived back in the country. I knew he had already, already arrived back in the country. So I sent him a couple simple casual texts to say, Happy New Year, New Year. Then at what time do you think he texts me back? Go on, have a guess. Yep, it was 12.22. That's three twos, and in my book, that's a sign. So it was all on again. In a few days, I would be returning back home. He would be there. We would reunite. I could hardly wait. Nervous excitement. Oh yeah, and in between all that, and this is the last bit I'm going to mention, and then I'm going to stop it there and, and finish this video. Um, in between all of this, I forgot to mention, as part of my holiday adventure, I had borrowed some camping equipment from my family. When I opened up the chili bin, which is known as other things in different cultures, but it's the, the, the box that keeps everything cold, my sister had lent me... Um, my sister had lent me the chili bin and there inside was a book, not just any book, but a book I had purchased in India 12 years prior about Reiki. I had taken it with me when I visited my sister in the US when she gave birth to her first child 12 years ago. My sister had only just found the book now, 2016, in amongst some storage boxes, but guess what was on the cover of that book? It was a picture, not just any picture. It was a couple of a couple intertwined, sitting on top of a yin and yang symbol with a, sorry, I'm swearing because I couldn't believe this when I found it, with a fucking eternity symbol hovering above their head in gold. What the fuck? Seriously, guys, come on, really? Okay, I guess I can no longer ignore the ridiculousness of the situation. Okay, I am so hearing you, universe. So then the next part of this is when I go back to see him after our four weeks apart. And anyway, I do hope you are enjoying listening to these uh, stories and these videos. I do apologize for the, the the quality of my video. I'm just using like a computer, my home computer and my laptop, and I haven't got any fancy equipment. I'm not really into fancy fancy. I'm just into kind of what's what and <laughs> what it is. So I just bring you the messages that are here for me and and I have been told that they do help others, so that is my intention for sharing. I do hope that um, you do receive some beautiful healing and lovely messages that help you on your journey too. And if you do need any more intensive work, I do offer one-to-one -one sessions and healing, so please check out my website below. And in the meantime, I'm sending you out heaps and heaps of love for the rest of the week. Okay, bye for now.